Hello everybody. Welcome to my Shalom Zone. My name is Sherry Dawn and it's my great honor and privilege to get to share this grace encounter with you today. Decree with me, Jesus is Lord and those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. The prince of this world is judged and now he is being cast out out of every toehold, out of every stronghold, because he has no defense against the blood of Jesus. Ooh, that already, I'm already happy now. <laughs> oh, before we get started, I want to invite you to deliberately put yourself in receiving mode. Because if you don't need this now, you will. And if you don't need it for yourself, you're going to have opportunities to minister it to somebody else. So it will do you a world of good to pay special attention to what I'm sharing with you today and to on purpose make a decision to receive what I'm offering today until you get comfortable with receiving comfort from the Lord and then allowing Him to flow through you to minister comfort to other people. Uh, recently, I was asked to speak at the memorial service of a longtime uh, family acquaintance who had passed away suddenly. And when I prayed about what to share, my heart was just overwhelmed with the desire to comfort this family because they have suffered so many losses in the last several years. And as I was continuing to pray and, you know, asking the Lord, you know, what can I possibly say that's going to be able to help in the face of all of this. I just um, began to desire to comfort them. And I began to realize that what I was sensing and experiencing was actually God's heart and His desire to comfort this family. And so, you know, I did. I followed through and um, the results were, you know, good because the Lord was behind it. But... Ever since then, I've, I've just had this thought, and it just, it will not go away, about the idea for the need to comfort God's people. So, on my lightning fast mind, finally caught up, well, maybe this is something the Lord's wanting me to share on video. <laughs> so, and I could not remember whether I had already posted something on comfort. I know I speak about the comfort of the Lord in, you know, in relation to other lessons that I'm teaching. So I went back, all the way back to when I first began to air these videos in, I think it was March of 2020. But I went back and I looked at every title uh, from that time all the way up through this point in 2022. And I couldn't find any where I had done a teaching on comfort. So today, by the grace of God, I'm not only going to teach on comfort, uh, but I'm going to show you how to receive it. So as I said, put yourself in receiving mode. <laughs> uh, I want to share with you first, John chapter 14, Gospel of John 14, verses 25 through 27. Jesus is speaking. And he said, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now I want you to notice in the context of these one, two, three verses, it takes the comfort of the comforter for us to not let our hearts be troubled and to be able to resist fear and live in peace. And Jesus said that part of the assignment of the Holy Spirit was to bring to our remembrance the things that he had said unto us. And another place we read on over in, in the Gospel of John, that the Holy Spirit is to take the things that belong to Jesus and show them unto us. And Jesus said he was leaving us his peace, his shalom peace. So this is the natural habitat, the natural environment for the born-again child of God is to be able to live in peace. 
But we live in such circumstances that that peace is constantly being challenged. The enemy is constantly trying to chip away at it. So we find ourselves frequently needing to go to the Lord to receive comfort. And as believers in Jesus, we have continual access to the comfort of the Lord. And I'm so thankful that we do. But as I said earlier, there's still a lot of people that even though they're believers in Christ, they don't know how to receive comfort from him. But that aside, what about those people who don't know Jesus as their Savior? Psalm 34 and verse 18 was one of the things that the Lord gave me to minister at that gathering at the memorial service. Because, you know, anytime you're going to have a gathering of people, there's bound to be some that are not born again. At Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh those that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. And the Lord just quickened that to my heart. Doesn't matter whether they're born again or not. If that heart is broken, he is near. Now, why would he want to be near people with broken hearts? Well, he has a desire to minister grace. He's the God of all grace. <laughs> That's his heart. That's what he does. That's who he is. Grace is his undeserved, unmerited, unearned favor. And in Psalm 147 and verse 3, the scripture says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. So I'm speaking these out to let you know and understand, even if you're not born again, even if you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, God still wants to comfort you because it matters to Him that your heart hurts. Broken-hearted people, in case you haven't figured it out yet, they act up. They do stupid stuff in order to try to deal with the pain. And in the past, especially regarding people that are not yet born again, the church as a whole has missed some golden opportunities to minister because we've not been taught how to take advantage of this truth that God is near those of a broken heart. If that heart is broken, we need to just take it as an established fact and a covenant truth. He's near. He's present. He's ready. He's wanting to help. He's waiting to be called upon for healing and for comfort. I want to share with you something in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. This is Jesus' ministry statement. It's uh, recorded also in Luke chapter 4. But this is where Jesus was reading from when he picked up the scroll to read. In Isaiah 61, verse 1, he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. It matters to God that your heart hurts. And he sent Jesus to deal with that. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So I want you to take away from this, even if you're not born again, it glorifies God to be able to comfort you. So the smartest thing you can do is just sit still and let him love on you for a few minutes. Let somebody pray for you that can minister that comfort and that grace to you. But he said he wants to comfort all that mourn. All is all. I don't care whether it's Hebrew, Greek, or English. All means all. If you are sad, if you're depressed, if your heart needs to be comforted, then the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, is right there with you to do that because of that brokenness. But now, if you don't know that, you can stumble around, all around His presence, and never be comforted. So part of our responsibility as believers and as ministers of the Lord's grace, ambassadors of the kingdom, is to acquaint people with the truth. Hey, God is not trying to keep you out of the kingdom. He is not standing by with a ball bat ready to whack you every time you mess up. He is ready to comfort you because how many people do you know who do not have a broken heart? 
from one thing or another. We've all had to deal with broken hearts. And some of us have not dealt with it well. And it's showing up in our lifestyles and in the things that we're participating in trying to assuage that pain. And it's not going to go away until we let the Lord comfort it and minister to it. All right, Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 5. God is speaking to the prophet, and he's telling him, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So I want you to understand, according to Scripture, the reason God is present and able and ready and willing to minister comfort to you is because the iniquity is pardoned. Where was it pardoned? It was pardoned at the cross when Jesus took our sins into his own body on that tree and was punished in our place. The iniquity was pardoned because his blood was shed for us. So now, and, and this is I'm telling you all of this so that you can tear down any mental blockages in your mind that there are any uh, silence, any whispers of the devil as he would try to whisper you and tell you, well, yeah, that might apply to everybody else, but look what you've done. God's not going to want to comfort you. Pooey. Yes, he is. God said out of his own mouth, you comfort my people because the iniquity has been pardoned. The sin has been dealt with. All that's left is for us to receive the forgiveness. And if you, even if you don't want to receive the forgiveness, at least receive the comfort. Because he's there to minister comfort to you. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now the New Testament in the book of Matthew uh, it tells us this was speaking about John the Baptist. So we know this is talking about Jesus, this prophecy. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked shall be made straight. The rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. What I want you to understand by reading all of that in the context of that first verse about comforting my people is that there's something that happens when we begin to reach out and comfort people according to the word of God based on the knowledge that their iniquity has already been forgiven. Then it releases the glory of the Lord to shine. Good goobly goo. How have we been so blind to that? And no wonder the glory has not been shining in times past because we've still been so determined to try to pound the sin out of each other when Jesus already took care of it. And he's telling us now, it's a new covenant. It's a new day of salvation. Now the way you deal with things is you get in there and you start ministering comfort to people because it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Whew. So we can see from these verses that there's a need to educate believers to minister comfort to others. But the thing is, we cannot minister to others that which we have ourselves not yet received. So comfort has to be deliberately received. Let me say that again. Comfort has to be deliberately received. Psalm 77 in verse 2, the psalmist was writing about a day of trouble that he was in. And one of the things that he said was, my soul refused to be comforted. We can get so used to being miserable that we don't know what to do when somebody tries to offer us comfort. So we brush it off, we reject it. So that's the reason I ask you at the beginning of this, put yourself in receiving mode. Choose on purpose to receive comfort. Don't let your soul refuse to be comforted. This is also one of the reasons that the Lord encourages us to pray for one another and for intercessors to pray for people that are not yet born again because there's so much available that they don't understand. They don't know about it and they're doing without it needlessly because God has made the provision but it doesn't get through to them if we don't oppose those spirits of darkness that have got their minds blinded and if we don't pray for their comfort, for their benefit, and for their blessing. So I am going to pray over you. And again, I encourage you to make a decision to just receive comfort from the Lord while I pray over you. 
I want to ask that you make a decision to believe that God is near based on these verses that I've shared with you because He's God. He does not lie about Himself. His testimony about these things, this is true. And whether you're born again or not, He's near. Whether you go to church or not, if your heart's broken, He's near. Whether you feel like you need to be comforted or not, He's near and He wants to comfort I read you out of the book of Isaiah. Your iniquity is forgiven because of Jesus. God is near if you have a broken heart. And the commandment to his people is still comfort his people. Comfort my people. All right. If you're not driving, if you're where you can, just take a moment and just put your hand over your heart. If it helps to close your eyes and just shut out everything, Accept the sound of my voice. Do that. And I'm just going to lift you up unto the Father and give Him the opportunity to manifest His presence right there where you are because He's near. He doesn't have to come in from the other end of the universe. you know. And even if He did, He'd be there in a split second because He's faster than light. But no, he's, he's there right there where you are. He's near because of the broken heart. He's also near... Because the blood of Jesus has already been shed. And we get to take advantage of that. And outwit whatever the enemy is trying to do. To keep people in the bondage to sorrow and suffering and pain. God's heart is that sorrow and mourning flee from us. That we obtain gladness and joy. But it has to be done deliberately. So, if you put yourself in receiving mode. Close your eyes. Tune everything else out. Put your hand on your heart. And just allow the Lord to begin to minister comfort and grace to you as I pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for quickening this to my understanding and helping me to realize that you were wanting me to do a teaching on comforting your people. And I thank you for this opportunity to minister this grace to those who are hurting. And Lord, I, just, I lift them up to you because you said to come boldly to the throne of grace, to obtain mercy, and to find grace to help in time of need. And you specifically said in your word, comfort my people. Your people need comfort. They are bombarded by so many things in their lives. So many of them have hidden hurts in places where their hearts have been broken that they've never even voiced it out to another human being. Some of them have talked about it, but it has not being for relief it's just being because their mind can't turn loose of it and they just keep reliving it over and over and over they keep pulling the scab off the wound and it doesn't get time to heal because they don't they don't know any better but lord you're bigger than all of that so as i lift them up to you and pray for them first of all i want to thank you that you are the god of all comfort and i want to thank you that you have expressed your desire to minister that comfort because you love them so much and so deeply. And we call upon you to receive that comfort now. As a priest of the Lord, I pour in the oil and the wine, the oil of your spirit, the wine of the blood of Jesus, over all of these broken, wounded places in the minds, the wills, and the emotions of the people. And I declare the lordship of Jesus over them because they're not their own. They're bought with a price. And you have reconciled them to yourself through the death of your son. And it is written, having been reconciled by his death, they shall be much more saved by his life. So I'm calling upon you, Father, now, because of the truths of redemption, because of what happened at the cross, pour out your Holy Spirit now. Manifest him in the presence of these people and just begin to cause all of that sorrow and heartache and that that pain that goes so deep that sometimes it takes the breath away that it causes them to have insomnia they can't sleep that it takes away their appetite or it causes them to have inordinate appetites that they try to satisfy the pain whether it's with food or drugs or a drink or sex or whatever that heart is crying out to be comforted and they need to be able to receive that comfort now. So I'm asking you to minister that to them because it delights your heart 
to exercise this loving kindness on their behalf. Father, I'm so grateful that you're not trying to hold them at arm's distance. I'm so grateful that you are so willing to minister this grace. You told us to cast our cares over on you because you care for us. So on behalf of these people that you have reconciled by the death of your son, I ask that you help them now to cast their burdens over on you. All of the guilt, all of the condemnation, all of the shame, all of the reproach, all of the agony, all of the stuff that has happened as a result of this brokenness, we cast the care of that over on you right now in Jesus' name. And it would do you good, dear friend, if you would just speak that out. God, I cast the care over on you. And Lord, as they do this now, I speak shalom peace into their spirits because you're the God of all peace. Jesus, you said you left your peace with us. So I speak shalom peace to them because it is written that you create the fruit of our lips when we speak shalom, shalom. And you will heal them. And I'm trusting you to do that. And I just thank you, Lord, for that peace that passes all understanding. Help them, Lord, to just release all of the residue of the past and just expel it with every breath that they take. Just let it go. Just let it go. Because you're more than happy to get rid of it for them. And I thank you, Lord, that even as they hear the words of God in the scriptures, that there's a healing taking place because there's life in your word. And you're so eager to impart that life to people. So willing to demonstrate your love for them. And I just, I ask you, Father, by your Holy Spirit, help it click in their minds how to receive comfort from you. How to just call up on you and tell you, I'm hurting. I can't seem to get past this. I need help. And just let you love on them. Father, I praise you. I praise you that you're so compassionate and you're so kind and you're so good. And you never stop reaching for us. No matter how many times we push you away, no matter how many times we run the other direction, your heart is still reaching for us. Help us to get sense enough to just stand still and let you catch us. Father, I thank you. Lord, as we wait in your presence and that peace just seeps into their souls. Is there anything else, Lord, that you want to target specifically as I pray? All of the physical ailments that have come about because of brokenheartedness, I call forth now creative restoration miracles in the lives of these people as that sorrow leaves and the life and breath of God is just breathed upon them and ministers to them. Let healing and energy and zest for life be restored unto these people. Those who have been heart sick because of hope deferred, restore hope because you're the God of all hope too. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you are a present help in time of need. And it delights you to do us good. Comfort your people, Abba. I take authority over spirits of sorrow and mourning, and I command you to turn loose of the minds of the people. You've got no lawful jurisdiction there. They've been paid for by the blood of Jesus. God has given them grace in Christ Jesus before the world began. Grace has the prior claim, and I proclaim that truth over them. Jesus is Lord in this situation. You have to leave. 
heaviness, just that heaviness that just weighs down and just makes it almost impossible to get out of bed in the mornings and face life. You have no lawful jurisdiction or dominion there. I take away your dominion by the blood of Jesus and I command you to leave these people. They shall be comforted. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for that peace that passes all understanding, just saturating them. We receive in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Let me bless you. Shalom to you, beloved of the Lord. And you are beloved of Him, whether you've ever received His gift of forgiveness or not. And I hope that you do. But whether you do or whether you don't, He still loves you. The Lord bless you and cause His face to shine upon you. The Lord pour out His Spirit upon you <clears throat> to help you taste and see that He's good and He's got good plans for you. The Lord cause you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Great grace be upon you in this day of salvation. And I hope you said, Amen. <laughs> All right, dear friends, since we've already prayed, I'm just going to wish you a wonderful, blessed day and tell you that I will talk to you later. <laughs>